So a few days ago I posted this video which is a sunset duration analysis which confirms that the amount of time taken for the sun to set from Broome, Australia matches the heliocentric prediction to within a second. And two days after my video was posted, this video was posted by Critical Think who performs a similar analysis on a sunrise and as you will see when I play the video, the predictions for the heliocentric model once again match observed reality perfectly. So with his permission, I'll now play the video in its entirety here, but please also visit his channel, Critical Think. He's a good Aussie character with a great sense of humour and is putting together some excellent videos with well-rounded arguments concerning the shape of the Earth. Well, hello, flatties and globe defenders. It's Critical Thing from Down Under. And I'm here today at Alexandra Headlands. And it's very early in the morning. We're just going to have a bit of a look at a sunrise. Now, around about the same day that Wolfie was in Broome uh, capturing the sunset, I was on the eastern side of Australia on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland at Alexandra Headland and um, I, I was capturing the sunrise. Now it, I was very lucky it was a, a clear day and you could see a long way. And yeah, this isn't easy to do. There's generally clouds on the horizon. But so I was very, very lucky to get um, a holiday unit with a rooftop as well. So I could just go upstairs and film from the rooftop. And so the first thing you notice about, this is a, a still from my video, which I'll go through quickly in a moment. But uh, the first thing you notice there is, um, most reasonable people will understand that that is the horizon cutting off the sun. Now the flatties try to make out like that is the sun disappearing into the distance, which is, of course, absolutely ridiculous. But, you know, there has to be some kind of uh, mental gymnastics required to make everything fit into a flat earth model so what wolfie did with his sunset was he timed the movement of the sun as it sinks down into the water well that's a great idea and also i was at a different uh, latitude so i the time that it takes for the sun to rise out of the water for me would be slightly different so i decided to do the calculations and and check them again uh, against the globe model so the as this is a, just a copy of what wolfie did it's um so, but I've changed it to, to, I've redone the calculations for my latitude, which was 26.6 degrees south. So the same thing, the sun is a circular motion in, re, in relation to the movement of the earth, 15 degrees per hour, which is 360 degrees in 24 hours. And that makes one degree of movement in four minutes. And as Wolfie has <coughs> discovered by a Google search, the sun has an angular size of 32 arc minutes. And Alexandra Hadland is 26.6 degrees south latitude. And so the vertical motion of the sun needs to be calculated because the sun is moving at an angle of 26.6 degrees um as it moves through the sky and that's that's the angle that it's moving at 15 degrees per hour so you have to adjust it slightly uh, by taking the cosine of 26.6 degrees so 
at one degree per four minutes at 26.6 degrees, that in vertical movement, that translates to 0 0.894 degrees in four minutes. And so we convert the degrees to arc minutes, multiply by 60, we have 53.6 arc minutes in four minutes. And then we work out how long it will take for 32 arc minutes of the sun to tra traverse in a vertical direction. And that's taken with 32 divided by 53.64 and my four minutes. And it comes out to two minutes, 23 seconds. So I'll switch to the video now and see how long it took. Now I've set my camera up on the rooftop on the tripod and uh, after my initial zoom in I'm going to leave the camera pointing at the sun and not touch it so that we can have a good look at what happens to the movement of the sun. Now this is just before the sun's about to pop up so we look at the time and we'll go forward and there you can just see the sun coming up um, now i didn't know the exact spot it was going to come because it was very difficult to get the landmarks right close to the shore because all you can see is ocean there, very difficult to line something up. But there it is, and the clock says 13 seconds at this point in time. And you can see it start to rise up. Now, I'll play the whole video later, but right now I'm going to skip forward and fast motion. And we'll find out where it start, where it separates. All right, somewhere around here. It's somewhere around here. So where it's just, it's about thirty-six. So that's very close. Thirty-six, thirty-seven is two minutes. Thirty-seven minus thirteen is 2 minutes 24 and we predicted 2 minutes 23 and in Wolfie's video it was 2 minutes and 15 seconds so I've calculated what it should be at a different latitude it should be a few seconds different and it is so here's a that's a flat earth destroyed number one um, how can that be that that traversing of the sun is exactly as it is predicted in the globe model. Now, if there's somehow by some magic that um, the sun could be that low in the sky on a flat earth, uh, how would it be that everything comes together for it to be exactly that time? I mean, flatties can't model it, they, 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 how, what are the chances of that matching the globe exactly? And, you know, the sun's not even in the right position. And here's another thing that I want to point out. Um, well, first of all, this position of the sun for sunrise is in an easterly direction. Now, if we're on a flat earth, the sun would be way to the left because it's going around in a circle and it would travel from left to right as it rises up because it's going around in a circle over a flat earth. And there's another thing here. You can see that in this case, of course, you can get a reflection, uh, an inferior mirage over the water under the sun. Now, this, some people on the, on the sunset, some people say that, and I'm going to run this backwards so that it looks like a sunset. 
Some people will say that the sun is melting into that refraction layer and it's not sun going over the curve at all. So there's, yes, a, a great deal of the sun, of course, it's melting into the reflection, refraction layer even while the rest of it remains full size. Yes, that, that's totally believable. Anyway, um, so how can it melt into something there? It's totally disconnected. It, there is no no connection between the so-called melting pot and the sun there. So it's just a reflection, people. It's just a reflection of that bottom part of the sun. And, and uh, here's something else you'll notice. Notice that when the sun goes up, it actually moves to the left, which is, hello, completely the opposite direction. If it was flat, the sun would be moving from left to right on a sunrise. Because I am facing east for the sunrise, so the sun should be heading around the circle from the north east and arrive in an easterly direction more around midday but here we see the sun's going in the opposite direction from that predicted from the flat earth model so this is the opposite direction so what does that tell you about the flat earth model well it doesn't work does it pretty simple it's impossible, isn't it? And um, especially when the sun can't even get below a certain point in the sky because it's above a flat earth. But we'll do the calculations of that in a little while. Right now I'm going to play this video through. And... Okay, you can see. Now... I'm just going to leave the camera once I zoom in on the sun and get it positioned right. I'm going to leave the camera sitting there. And there's a bit of a pan out first off, just so that you can get a look at the location. And note the nice, crisp, clear edges. I'm actually not using any filter. Now the camera adjusts the light automatically to give us a uh, fairly good picture here, which I was quite surprised. But, um, now if you're, let's just forget the flatness for the moment. Um, if you were an observer, it would be difficult to determine, in fact impossible to, de to determine if it is the sun that's moving or the earth that's rotating and of course people never knew that for a long time but it became obvious by doing other measurements that it's the earth that's rotating and if you just let your mind wander for a minute and watch this happen it's very easy to let that become a reality in your mind now I'm not saying that that um, you you should brainwash yourself. I'm just saying that very easy to see that there's a very slow, steady movement that can be attributed to a rotation of the planet. Now it's very slow, it's noticeable as you see it very slowly moving, but you don't notice it as a movement under your feet because it's, it's a constant movement. We don't notice constant movement and the curve is very, very slight, so we don't notice that either. We have gravity pulling us down and so we don't notice any of 
the curved movement. But you take in the, and look at the sun over the, over the water, you can see the movement. So I'll, you can, I'll just leave this just for a little while because you can see that the sun is going to move to the left. And as I said before, this is the complete opposite direction that you would expect on the flat earth model with the sun circling above a flat plane. So I mean that should be a pretty solid clue to anyone that hasn't got any, um, shall we say it, religious stake in the outcome. So if you're thinking that it must be flat no matter what, nothing at all is going to convince you. But if you are open, really open to the truth, then you're going to see this and realize um, the flat earth sun is just not possible. And there was something there that I noticed there too. You see the bird flew across the sun. Now a lot of people say that they appear like they're going behind the sun and they do appear like that but that particular one actually you could see it pop up um, as it flew across the sun. I'll go back and replay that um, so you can pretty much see the direction the sun's there so I'll go back if I f fast forward slow f reverse and, and here comes this bird you can just see it flying in front of the sun. So there's another flat earth myth busted right there. Oh, what a wonderful day. So we'll, we'll go on to why this can never happen. This can never happen on a flat earth. And we'll have to do that another day. So there you have it. Flat Earth, totally destroyed by the sun, and we're not quite done yet. So there'll be a follow-on video for this one at some stage soon. And thanks very much for watching. And I actually look forward to making the next instalment. And I hope you look forward to watching it. So if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay, have a nice day.